Hey, everybody, it's Ryan from Pi Records, and I'm here with Dave from the Kahuna Kings. How are you? Just fine, Ryan. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. It's a pleasure to have you on. I was excited uh, after I heard your music to uh, finally get to talk to you. Well, I, I really appreciate you reaching out. Uh, it's been kind of a tough time for uh, a lot of live music and recording and things like that. It's uh, It's been really tough, uh, but it's still always an active part of my life, uh, whether I'm performing on a stage with the band or working in my studio, making, you know, writing music. So tell me... Um not just the Kahuna Kings, but tell me how you got started in, in music, not just surf music, but music in general. How did, how did it all kind of start? Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, I was born into kind of a large family. There was seven of us living under one roof and every, Everyone in the family was into music. I was the youngest, so I was just bombarded uh, with music from a from a very early age. Uh, and I mean, it was a variety of music. And amazingly, um, I live in Akron, Ohio. I'm from Akron, Ohio, uh, but for a short period of time when I was a year old, my family moved to SoCal about 20 minutes from Huntington Beach, Florida, or excuse me, Huntington Beach, California. And for about three years during the absolute peak height of surf, I was out there. Now, do I have any memories of surf music? I'm sure I heard it on the radio as mom and dad were, you know, driving around and, and stuff. Can't re my first inclination of anything related to uh, that type of music was uh, my parents were big Herb Alpert uh, fans. And so uh, there, there was always a lot of that going on in the house. But I mean, just kind of a funny, unrelated story that I was there right in the heart of things when, when surf music was born and took, took off. And I had no, you know, I had no conscious understanding of it. Um, and then, but like I say, a uh, huge mu musical family, lots of loud music all the time in my family. And uh, so I, I think when I was about 12, I got my own bedroom and my own hand-me-down stereo as older siblings were going off to college and stuff. And so I could, you know, kind of... Uh, put my stamp on what I wanted to listen to. Cause I usually I had to listen to Beatles or just, my, you know, my dad was into big band music. And uh, so I, I picked heavy hard rock right from the be beginning at 12 years old. And I went, took my lawn mowing, lawn mowing money rode my bike to the store and bought Deep Purple's Made in Japan as my very first stop on and I was 12 years old. Wow. And, and then just started absorbing, you know, it, 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 the harder, the better. Um, you know, I remember my neighbor across the street turned me on to uh, Paranoid by Black Sabbath when I was like 13. And it just, you know, which was, you know, that was uh, Black Sabbath was such a pivotal um, piece of music history. And they kind of carved a, a path that so many bands today are still working on that 
same platform. Um, and so a lot of heavy metal, a lot of kind of brain, brainy music too. A lot of Rush, a lot of Pink Floyd, uh, but certainly picking up on the heaviest uh, music um, that I could uh, absorb as I learned about it. A lot of UFO, uh, uh, when I finally in 79 got turned on to, to uh, Judas uh, Priest, they immediately kind of just, and to this day, I, I, I still consider them one of the greatest, greatest bands of all time. And kind of, kind of instilled, especially through the live concerts. Um, because at that time period, I was going and, and seeing every type of live music I could. And I, I just kind of, when I, when I saw that band, I kind of realized that I had just seen the most powerful music ever performed. And uh, so that kind of just, I think, created the foundation of who I am as a musician. And what, where does, where did, um, where did that, how did that lead you into surf music? Well, you know, I had heard bits and pieces of surf music through all of this time period. And, uh, you know, throughout, you know, much of our lives, if, if, if we, um, you know, listen to radio, flip the dial, you're, you're going to hear surf music. And I'm going to say that it, it, it's going to sound so cliche, but watching Pulp Fiction and the, the, the opening, you know, the opening riff by Dick Dale, I, I was just completely blown away. And I, I may have heard it in, in little bits and pieces um, before that, but once I heard that, I was like, what the heck is that? And I was just so, it's like, that is insanity. And, and so here's this guy that just absolutely loves heavy, heavy rock um all kinds of heavy rock and when that hit my ears it's like well that's in that it's in that it's triggering that same neurological pathway that triggers when you know i hear great hard rock with you know real strong beats um and uh so immediately and that was uh it was hard to really kind of, you know, YouTube was just about coming of age. So you can see, I, I kind of fell into this thing, you know, th this is already kind of a little bit past the, uh, 19, the, uh, the third wave, uh, 1990s. Um, and, uh, so I had to dig and explore and then Pandora hit and I created a Dick Dale station. That was about 2005. And, uh, and I just went through an extremely long period where all I listened to was certain music. Just it, it cut out all the metal, uh, all, all the hard rock, everything that and that's what I consume and uh and I'm still consuming it but I I kind of wanted to, I kind of want to be inspired to write surf music from outside of surf music I, I it's okay. important for me it, it's important for me so um, I got to tell you, the last probably two years or so, uh, I greatly updated all of my stereo equipment in my house. So I go to room to room, and and I have a, a great 
you know, stereo platform to choose from and with, you know, uh, Spotify title and all these things, you can walk into a room with your phone and pull up and listen. And uh, my main system is just over the top. And, and so what I've really been pursuing is modern, very well mixed and mastered hard rock and virtuoso guitar just to uh, really, you know, it's, it, it's got to trigger that neurological pathway, but I'm listening to the actual, uh, you know, the perfect uh, quality of, you know, the bands that put in that time and effort and spend the money on a good quality master so that my ears can really enjoy it. And, and so I've been listening some really, back to listening to some really heavy music uh, and then, then picking up one of the surf guitars and plugging in and, and, and see how my brain it, it, it is working different. Interesting. And love that in, inspired me. And it, it, it's actually been very, very, uh, I think, good for uh, me as a surf musician uh, because it, you know, my writing today is, and I wish I could be recording, but for many factors, primarily around COVID. I think, you know, the, to bring in, uh, spend a lot of time in an intimate recording studio uh, is just, I think we're all a little bit, you know, because because the, the next record, I, I want to really spend a lot of time with. Uh, which leads me to my next question. Your, uh, um your album that you put out is it 2017 yes um is is amazing uh I, I loved it do you want to talk a little bit about the process and what you were inspired by there well it yeah i i it, it really kind of was a magical time for me because um you know i put about seven years of just hardcore surf music listening uh, before I really learned anything about how to produce good surf guitar sound. And I would pick up, <laughs> and I didn't have like the equipment. You know, I had high gain, my marshals, that kind of stuff. And, and I plug it in with my nine gauge strings and it's like, I, I'm not getting it. Now I did have a hot rod to bill at the time. And so I remember one day the wife and the kids were out of the house. I, I'll never forget it. It was sun. It was a Sunday in the summertime, right about noon. And I walked over and let me try this. And I took uh, one of the Stratocasters and uh, I dimed the reverb and on the clean channel of the Hot Rod DeVille, I turned it up to about seven and, and started like playing. And I go, gosh, that, that sounds like surf music. And that was it. It was that the chase was on. It's like, okay, well, I'm going to, and I started playing, you know, and tinkering through, and they were all kind of riffs and melodies um, that belonged to me. I wasn't trying to play, you know, copy Dick Dale or, or, or do something like that. Um, and um, so as that was going on, I tried to deepen uh, my tone chase that tone uh i found surf guitar 101 and uh reached out and slowly you know kind of built a little bit of a uh 
you know, guys I could go to, just the inside track, plus all the forums there. And, uh, and geez, for, you know, the, I think the chase goes on, but last year I kind of finished my last piece of the puzzle as far as my, my sound. Um, and, uh, but once I did, had enough, but, you know, I think I, I had bought a Fender Twin and I learned how to hotwire the uh, reverb circuit over into the normal channel to get more drip, get a closer to true surf sound. And that's when I really dug in and started writing. And I'm going to say this is about 2013. And I started writing uh, the type of surf that I was really enjoying, which was that traditional uh, fun, you know, kind of uh, up, upbeat, kind of, kind of set the mood in, in just to, it made me feel good. And, and so I think we started cracking the books on the actual recording. It took a while to finish it because, you know, I, I own a, a company, a green industry company, very busy in the summertime. And wintertime is kind of, uh, you know, my, my free time to do the recording and that kind of stuff. So I brought uh, a friend of mine in who's an amazing drummer, Tim Roth, and he did the drum work. Uh, for that record. This is before the band was a band and uh, I had written the music and uh, it actually took a couple of winners because Tim is also a business owner in the green industry. He's busier than I am in the summertime. So winter time was uh, let's sit down and let's start beating out uh, some of the basic stuff. And then I did the rest of the tracking because the Kahuna Kings really didn't exist at the time. Then uh, the band started to get together and I managed to finish that record in uh, about 2016 and get it released. But it, it, it's basically the trad traditional surf music sound that I love that is so common uh, in, you know, uh, Surfer Joe uh, kind of uh, Satan's Pilgrims that, that just pure traditional surf music. Big drippy, kind of simplistic, nothing real complicated about any of that uh, that I wrote on that record. But very melodic. Thank you. Yeah, yeah it kind of when you, you know, you go back to the how I grew up, you know, I was instilled with melody. There's always got to be something rolling. In, in fact, a funny story. When I was not, and, and I'll let you get back. Uh, when I was between the age of, I'm going to say four actually probably three or four, up till about 11, I shared a room with my oldest brother, okay? He was a Beatles, he, he was a mid-60s music nut, but mainly Beatles. So I was just absolutely bombarded with Beatles in, you know, seven, five years old, seven, eight. And um, at about that time, I had to go in and get a uh, some kind of dental procedure done. I think of tonsils. I can't remember. They put me out with ether or whatever they used as a, uh, you know, they kind of put you to sleep at the time. That entire experience had the Beatles as the background music. So I was like, I was like tripping 
that's what I remember. I mean, I, I felt like I was probably tripping or something, but in the background was the Beatles. So that's how ingrained that melody is in my my head. And so it's really easy to write a riff, you know, a cool riff, and then put a melody on, on top of it. And I can't sing well, so it might as well be some surf guitar. You know? <laughs> so so uh, what are you working on right now? Well, I have been, uh, you know, with COVID, and, and, and I want to kind of just, you know, I, COVID has really kind of put a damper on, you know, a lot of music, a lot of bands. Uh, but we suffered pretty extensively with it. Uh, before COVID hit, we were doing 20 shows a year, 20 really good shows a year. And I was, you know, kind of bringing new material to the band in bits and pieces, and we try to put it together. We're all professionals. We all have uh, full-time jobs. So it's, you know, I, I, you know, us surf musicians, all of us, I think, are, you know, it's something we do on the side. And, and, and so, so it's, you know, kind of hard to uh, really, you know, record albums do tours do all that kind of stuff it's just not that that's not what the surf music uh, industry was built on so anyway when covid came in and hit us uh you know we so much got shut down and we really limited how much uh, playing we did i mean i think in 20 uh gosh in 2020 Funny, there just wasn't a whole lot open and opportunities to actually uh, uh, play. There were some places closed, um, so that limited. We we did get outside to some outside uh, events that were a little bit safer, and I continued writing. and uh, And then when the vaccine came, um, it it. It seemed like we we kind of saw hope and it opened up our window. We saw some of the big festivals that we typically uh, had been playing. Uh, we got a chance to get up on stage and play them again. And uh, and yet I've kept writing. Now, my writing has has uh, it, it it's taken a dark turn. <laughs> mm. And uh just a, a, although I've written some, I would say, you know, my, my typical Kahuna Kings, melodic, traditional, drippy, good feeling song um, in the middle of this, we have seen so much of the world. And, uh, you know, the, the world has, you know, we're, I, I think a lot of us are carrying the world on our shoulders right now. We have seen so much between the pandemic, uh, the unrest we have seen and the, just the concern in, in our, you know, in the United States, we, we just really have been through a lot. And I have in, in, inspired by some of the heavy music that I had like, really absorb and seeing what's going on in the world i've developed uh, a piece of music that i think kind of takes surf in kind of a new direction in the fact that you know how many times is surf been taken in a new direction it happens all the time um but what I've been, the vision I have for my uh, impact on surf and what I want to do as a surf guitar, surf musician, is I want to be able to relate kind of what the world is doing, kind of reflecting back on the world. Uh, and you can't really do it because you, all you can do is name a song to reflect back because we're not, you know, there's no lyrics, but 
in my head, I'm getting a vision as I'm playing songs. What does this music mean to me? What, what can be conveyed by that? And eventually title. And, you know, a lot of the, the new music, like uh, one of the big pieces I, I've written and we be actually played it as a band. We played a lot of the new music as a band. Uh, but it it's darker. Uh, the songs are more progressive. They they have changes in them. Uh, what I hope to be the opening tr track of this next record is a song called Climate of catastrophe. And, you know, it, it, it's not like saying that, you know, advocating that, hey, you know, we're dealing with climate change. Um, you know, I, 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 in a political sense, it's just that, you know, it's, it's a very, very intense piece of music that goes through a, a lot of changes. I consider it kind of like the, uh, um, on 2112, the opening volley from 2112, the overture. Uh, it's a seven to eight minute piece of music that is extremely intense. Um, several different changes to it. And really all the rest of the music that I have written based off of this kind of you know, theme inside me is all like that. And, you know, I, 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 I struggle to wonder if it is even suited for the Kahuna Kings because it is so dark. It is so deep. Um, uh, you know, the, the, the instrumentation is going to have to be exceptional. I think of it as like going into the studio like a rush where we're, we're all coming in with our best game and we are going to develop this, this just mu uh, music uh, that, you know, when people hear it, they're going to be, you know, just really uh, taken back by it, uh, uh, power and energy and, and writing. And so, you know, I kind of struggle with, with is this going to be right for the Kahuna Kings? When we play, we are a high energy, fun band. We bring girls that dance. Uh, we have crowds that just love the music, have a good time. It's all, almost all of it is very upbeat. And here I've written this piece of music that, um, you know, it, 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 it's based off a of traditional surf guitar sound. So it's heavy drip, heavy reverb, heavy tremolo picking, but I want, I want to hear Neil Peart on drums and I want to really just crazy in your face bass, you know, similar to Getty Lee, uh, Chris Squire, just really progressive, uh, very up front, bright kind of, and that's not traditional surf. So it's really a struggle, but I, I've, I've got a whole album written of what is going to be, hey, little doc came to see me um <laughs> what is going to be a very intense experience because i think music you know part of what i've always you know going and seeing live music you know there's a little bit of fear that i believe should happen in powerful music whether that fear is is just that in intense adrenaline rush but when you see a powerful band especially for the first time something needs to happen inside of you uh that you know uh, 
triggers that adrenaline and and you know i i call it fear but it, you know some of the bands that have really impacted me very powerfully also kind of scared me a little bit up front it was just so intense and and loud and intense and it was just like God, what the heck is going on and uh so that it's kind of stuff it's supposed to really really set you back in your seat i and i i would like you know if this record ever gets recorded i want people to feel absolutely emotionally spent after listening to it and then you know they can come back to it and say wow that was really cool it was really but they got the first time through it was just really intense and uh so i've been actually writing a little bit of what i would call interlude uh between you know just on the you know the opening side of 2112 you you go from what is it seven minutes of just real high impact and then you go into the cave when he's tuning the guitar just to calm down a little bit and so now because I, I i to do this to people i don't know i you know i don't want to give anyone you know seizures but that's kind of <laughs> how that's that's kind and 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 still remain traditional surf guitar because there's so many variations of surf with driven guitar work a friend of mine from the beyonders which you know you may have heard of here in akron uh their their dr drive you know driven guitar sound you know it, it, distortion on that guitar it's instrumental it's surf space heavy drive but what i want to do is is take the absolute purest dick dale type guitar sound and apply it to 2112 that's my vision very cool that sounds awesome hey, thank you thank you but at the same time i do have songs that i've written in the more traditional sense uh and i i probably need to dig in and pull a little bit more of that up just within the ranks of the kahuna kings because i i i think that you know i get great bandmates um but i think there's a a sense when we have played some of this darker material live that you know, it, it's kind of taking it out of what I think our listeners' comfort zone is. They expect us, you know, we do a lot of cover music plus the, you know, our, our own music. And it, they let me, you know, kind of pick out that catalog of, of, of cover music. And it's all usually very intense and very um, mel melodic, um, you know, we, we love covering um, Mr. Lou by the Space Rangers. And we do kind of a medley, uh, you know, we'll come out of one song and then just slowly build everything back up and do that. And, uh, you know, that's kind of what we're no, you know, I, I think I sent you the the one video of us covering Blondie's Dreaming. That's yes. blasted. And I and I told you that's my favorite Blondie song. Yeah, and that was one, gosh, I, there was a time uh kind of in the middle of writing the original Kahuna Kings, where I studied the idea of doing more modern pop rock um such as the ventures did you know the ventures were known to cover in their own style and and so i spent a lot of time just hey this is such a cool song 
how does how can I transpose all of that into a guitar, you know, instrument or a surf instrumental? And that one was one I kind of struck pay dirt. You know, I wrote transposed all of those different uh, things, and and I've heard other people that may have heard our and and try to cover it, but I think we do the best cover of that besides like a blondie cover band would do. Yeah. Just really lively, upbeat, fun. Can you uh, can you see this? Uh, where are my glasses? Oh, yeah. Yes. She's my favorite. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but uh, so anyway, you know, uh, finding those little treasures and that one has I, I tell you what we have played that in, in festival situations in front of huge audience that one always always just kills uh you know we'll do a little bit of ramones and a lot of surf bands kind of have used followed that kind of thing where we're gonna we're gonna find something that everyone knows that doesn't know my goal is to find these songs that everyone knows but they don't know surf music and then do a surf version of that to help bring people into the fold i've, I've always been felt like surf music just does not get enough credit for the music that it is and how do we expand that um you know and i've kind of gotten i don't know i've maybe taken a little bit i may have caused myself a little bit of grief in discussing it with other surf musicians that um you know we'll be doing a big festival show and you know as we're setting up or something someone will come by what kind of music do you play blah 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 well we play instrumental surf music Oh, 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 you mean like the Beach Boys? And it's like, just, you're going to have to stick around. It's nothing like the Beach Boys that you know. There's no singing. <laughs> it's real high. And, and, and I always have to go, what have you seen Pulp Fiction? Yes, I've seen Pulp Fiction. Okay. Uh, the opening, Dick Dick, that's what we do. Oh, oh wow. That's really, and and so, you know, my, my thing was that, you know, we need to figure out a way to expand the reach of this type of music. And that was why I started going the direction I, I, I did on writing this new album and, and writing it in kind of what is going on in the world. I'm a thousand miles from a beach. I haven't served for 40 years. Okay. Um, I'm not going into space. So all these themes that the surf, you know, industry, the surf music culture spends their time living in and writing about for most of us, it's just pure fantasy. We're not 99%, 99.9% of us don't surf. We love the music, but it has nothing to do with surfing anymore. And, and so that was kind of, the, you know, the direction. It's that what's going on in the world? Well, there's a lot of things going on in the world. So write a little bit more seriously about it while I'm, you know, penning this thing out in my head and playing it, you know, I'm getting visions of what is actually happening in the world and, uh, and, and trying to re go, go to where they are in life, 
And the only way we can really kind of do it is with really intense music that just absolutely magical, drippy, reverb, guitar tone, tremolo, which is full of, you know, tremolo picking, so full of absolute, just sheer madness and energy. You know, that's kind of a start. And, uh, and then maybe name it something where they're at, like climate of catastrophe or song unrest, um, and and try to expand that that um, you know the band, that that video I sent you from the Orions out of Israel. Yeah, uh, they, uh, to me that that video they did was it was really powerful i've had to watch it a few times and they they are kind of a man or aster man kind of theme now as a band and yet it just what they were doing with that uh you know it was a live take of you know i don't know how many songs are on six seven songs and that music reaches, it reached me. Uh, and I think that kind of a, a just, it, I think it has the ability to touch people that, you know, aren't familiar with surf music. Very cool. And, Very cool. I, I agree. I, I, I dug the video a lot. Yeah, it was good. And they, they have another one that they did at a big festival in uh, Israel uh, this past summer and uh, pretty much the same set and uh, just a, a really, really a, a band that, you know, kind of, you know, a good friend of mine, Ivan Pongreso, the Madeira. Uh, just, it, you know, I consider him kind of a trad prog style guitar as a guitarist, whether he's playing, uh, you know, Shadows uh, with his dad or Rush. The guy's just a phenomenal guitarist. He's just a very advanced guitar player. Yeah. And uh, so you know, he's kind of brought all of that in, you can hear it in throughout all of his music, um, where he, he's touching into elements of his hard rock, you know, he, he loves Rush, Priest, Maiden, and all of that music, just like I do. We talk about it all the time. We, it, it just, um, and and yet he he's been able to pin that 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 into his uh, music, um, you know, with the with the Madeira and the Space Cossacks and and his new his new music. Um, he's kind of wanting to touch into that traditional. Uh, um, more of that traditional writing and sense, but uh, um, you know, he, he's a guy that uh, has used the elements of traditional surf guitar with the drip, the tremolo picking, uh, and then by using the delay, spin it off into a just a, a more progressive. Oh, type of music and then when I found the Orions it was just like wow this is this is beyond manner astromat or any of the heavier prog uh, you know Daikaju which yeah. we got to play with at, at one time um, and that's why I sent that I go this is the, about the coolest new surf that I'm aware of in well it's now 2022 so <laughs> hopefully 2022 will find more great 
just expanded so it just seems like uh during the during the pandemic um people just started writing music and recording it at home there's just so much popping up right now um that i think when when things get as close to normal as they possibly can um i think you're going to see this just huge wave of surf music no pun intended <laughs> oh let's hope so and, and and gosh i would love to i i just would love to have my vision uh, come come forth but you know it's gonna take it's gonna take a lot of work um my studio i wonder if i can pick up my computer and kind of show my recording space live room is pretty small and it you know it's going to take hours and hours of work to get through because uh you know especially the drum work um the the drum work is so important because you can't like go fix anything <laughs> when you're recording drums I mean, I guess you could, but what an unbelievably challenging task it is. So really, when it comes down to sitting, and especially if it's a seven or an eight minute song with breaks and things like that, um, it, it really has to be gone through uh, very well, especially when you're ambitious. Uh, uh, you know, I was lucky on the first record uh, that, uh, Tim, uh, you know, he's such a great percussionist to begin with, but he, he stays at that, he, he's usually sitting at the drum set every day, every day. And then, uh, so he was able to come in and uh, kind of very quickly uh, dish out some, some pretty good basic trad style surf drums okay and uh but you know listen to so much you, you know you absorb so much prog rock and and stuff like that um just crashing and bashing um you know it, it's that's that's great um but there are emphasis things that, you know, I, I, I want to be able to do. So uh, to create that record, it's just going to take hours and hours of going through these songs and uh, really developing, uh, uh, conveying the intensity that I'm trying to, and then letting it kind of, uh, you know, the synergistic effect take hold. And so I, I, I'm hoping we get back uh, in it, to that, to where that time, because I really, I really don't want to put out a record. I want to put out a record that can be put on my great main system and, and just feel every nuance of that energy and that, that sound and, and crispness. And so I'm being a perfectionist kind of you know and maybe not letting that happen but in in all reality uh with the covid uh, so many of my friends you know uh, have have dealt with it and survived but just within the band uh tim the original drummer got it at a christmas party got really sick. Tim's extremely physically fit. He jog or he bikes, he swims. He, a bike ride for him is 150 miles. He swims every day. It not, he felt like he had been uh, thrown off a train for about a week. Well, I don't want to feel like that. He's in better health than I am. And it, it 103 temperature and stuff. So right now is not the, a good time to be it, it just there's so much going on with that 
I believe that people ought to try to stay away from each other as much as possible. Uh, Ryan, our bass player, he got it just, he got it during Christmas also, uh, real serious, uh, didn't have to go to a hospital or anything, but he's still dealing with the side effects of COVID pneumonia. So you get it, you're going to get, you know, you might get real sick and it's going to set you back a little bit. So, you know, all of that, you know, the idea of bringing people together and start bashing it out, it just, you know, there's a season and I, I'm respecting this pandemic and realizing that season has to, you know, I wish I could. I, Yvonne, uh, recorded his last record in a giant church i don't know if you've seen the pictures no uh i think it was a church on campus uh at hillsdale where he teaches and they set up they were far away from each other plenty and and they were able to do that there and that wow what a great what a, i've seen the pictures just a beautiful setup uh, Very cool. for, for that record but at the same time they kind of went in with the you know it was pretty much traditional um so i i think it was a weekend that they did that if i'm not mistaken they wrote the song passed it passed it among themselves came in with their game plan uh game at, at the top and just muscled their way through a record in uh, in a great location. Wow, fantastic. Awesome. Well, uh, thank you for your time, Dave. Uh, I really enjoyed the videos you sent me. Uh, I enjoyed the, the Kahuna Kings uh, album that I heard. And uh, I just appreciate you setting aside some of your time and, and being patient um with me as as far as uh my my timing um so thank you very much well it's really great to uh do this with you R ryan and man let's just keep the surf alive and uh, we look forward to uh, uh having this world open up again and uh i know that i want to contribute some uh really incredible me and the band uh want to contribute some really incredible uh, uh, surf in the days to come. Awesome. Awesome. You have a great night. Okay. You too, Ryan. Thank you.